following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the post show for WWE Hell in a Cell. WWE Hell in a Cell just going off the air a few moments ago, live from Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for joining us wherever you are all over the world. We're going to bring you a full recap and analysis on tonight's pay-per-view events. We're also looking for your feedback, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, at PWR Show on Twitter. Again, that's at PWR Show on Twitter. We're asking you to tell us whether you thought Hell in a Cell tonight was a pass or a fail. Go ahead and look at our Twitter feed and retweet whichever you thought it was, pass or fail, for tonight's WWE Hell in a Cell. Tonight's event was one that featured a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and it may not be who you expected, and no winner in the WWE Championship Hell in a Cell matchup. Yes, indeed, folks. There really wasn't a winner in that matchup between CM Punk and Ryback. But what we do know is, as of this moment, CM Punk walks out of Atlanta, still the WWE champion. But the show going off the air tonight, Hell in a Cell, the focus was not on the WWE champion, but it was on the man who still wants to be fed more, that and Ryback. David Hero, shenanigans personified in this matchup. As Punk and Ryback have a match at the end of the pay-per-view in Hell in a Cell, Ryback has Punk up for the shell shock, and the referee, the referee of all people, the referee tied to shenanigans in the past with CM Punk, gives Ryback a low blow, and then the fast three count, CM Punk retains, however... There's got to be some kind of ruling coming on this matchup. Intrigue definitely built for tomorrow night on Raw, and I'm sure intrigue built in your head too because you're wondering how in the blue hell can I be so right so many times because you have said for weeks, if not months, that Ryback would walk out of Hell in a Cell, the WWE champion, and many people saw doubt in that. And I will give you this. There were many times during that matchup tonight that it seemed like that may be the case. But ultimate shenanigans got in the way. You know, you could tell the way the match was laid out that they that they had no idea what they wanted to do, how they were going to protect certain people. <sighs> wow. You know, I mean, hey, you know what, CM Punk, he's the best in the world. And, you know, it wasn't Brock Lesnar that helped him win. It wasn't Big Show that helped him win. It wasn't even Paul Heyman. It was a referee. A referee beat Ryback, a referee, beat Ryback. That, to me, is humorous. If that's the best finish they can come up with to protect everybody, I guess that's fine. But what a shame how they had the two streaks going head-to-head. And talk about two guys that looked extremely uncomfortable in the ring together. You could tell that Punk did not trust Ryback at all. And it was almost like watching a Matador fight a bull. I mean, Ryback goes 100 miles an hour and misses nonstop. And, you know, it it exposed Ryback. Um, It wasn't Punk's best match he's had in in forever, as far as I'm concerned. And you know what? It's it's the hell in the cell. I mean, it's the hell in the cell where people expect to see Mick Foley fly off the cage, Rikishi fly off the cage, Um, you know, big, huge spots, blood and gore and everything else, and the fans got nothing but a referee nut shot. Well, CM Punk bled a little from his back. Uh, you know, here's what's here's what's intriguing. If CM, if Ryback would have won this matchup, you'd be coming on here with your little sinister laugh and talking about "I told you so, I told you so, I told you so." You, now you're backing up, and you're, you're reminding me of one of the two presidential candidates right now in the fact that you're just all of a sudden you're talking about how well this was only to protect both men. Well, no, right. Listen, if they really are in in the market to create new stars, you have Ryback win. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe Ryback is still made a star because he was standing on top of the cage and everybody was chanting. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. There's so, no mean, doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt that the in that show, Ryback was presented as a star. But one thing I took note of during this matchup, and even when Ryback was introduced in the crowd, maybe it's Atlanta, maybe it's because the crowd was relatively dead all night. They didn't necessarily pop when Ryback's music hit. But they do enjoy saying, feed me more, feed me more. Is Ryback nothing more than a chant? Is he nothing more than a new what, a new yes? 
And we see how great yes meant for Daniel Bryan. But I was very surprised, David, by how many people weren't sustainably behind Ryback tonight in the matchup. Because even after he, he, he got the he got the feed me more chant during the matchup, he executed a move on Punk and was there was no cheer, there was no pop, there was no reaction after that. Well, there move. was but nothing the fans, from that crowd the entire night. But they chanted "Feed Me More" in unison and very loudly just seconds and moments before that. But then they didn't really cheer when the guy they were chanting for did his move. It you was know, just, it was surprising. If, if you go back to when Kevin Nash ended the streak of Goldberg with Ooh. was it the cattle prod? Yeah. That made more sense than a referee beating a 285-pound beast. You know what I mean? Here's a guy that, you know, sure, it's a shot to the nuts, and that changes everything. But here's a guy that has beaten how many guys in handicap matches? You know, he's beaten The Miz. He beat Dolph Ziggler, but he can't beat a referee. They set to me, that's up. a burial of Ryback. They set this up perfectly, though, David Hero, which makes me think less of a burial and more of a way out. Because all night long, what was Paul Heyman doing? Pleading with Vicky Guerrero to cancel the matchup. Pleading. And you know what? Everyone, and, and you know, here's the problem I have. And, they, and Vince and Vicky both said no. And uh-huh. when all that nonsense went down, they didn't go out to the ring. They didn't restart the match. They didn't question the Thoratai. They <laughs> let it go. Here's the question, and, and, and obviously we watch a lot of wrestling. Obviously those listening and joining us in the chat room here on Blog Talk Radio where this discussion is very spirited right now about this matchup. The question is, for those who aren't us, those who watch wrestling on a casual basis, might tune into Raw once a month, might order a pay-per-view every now and again, or might have been down at a blast zone watching the pay-per-view. Do they notice that there's a well, – did they notice – that the referee is not one of the usual referees in a match like this. Well, is I don't know if you saw my tweet fan? during the, you know, I sent out a tweet during the Sheamus Big Show match. I said, I certainly hope that Debbie Armstrong, Scott Armstrong, is the referee in that main event to prevent shenanigans, and he wasn't, and look what happens. Yeah. I mean, you know what? As soon as he was the referee, the timeline filled up, hey, it's the rookie ref, it's the new ref. Well, that that right there kind of tips your hand a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, listen, obviously, listen, the creative offices, the agents, Vinnie Mac, Stephanie, and, and, and Triple H, they have the big crystal ball. They have the 18-month calendar in front of them. They know how they want this to go for so long and so for so forth. For me, the way I was booking it was to elevate CM Punk to make him a bigger and better star. For him to beat Ryback this way does not elevate him to the same level and or status as The Rock. The Rock is the pinnacle. He is the crown jewel on top of the WWE mountain. And if anything, it just proves that Punk cannot beat a guy of a Ryback stature or a Rock stature. If Punk would have dropped the belt to Ryback tonight, and let's say he does the whole Rocky vignettes for Apollo Creed, and then, you know, of course, Apollo Creed being played by Ryback, and defeats Ryback in the rematch, well, now it proves that Punk can beat that guy. I just think that, you know, they're short-sighted, and they could have done some pretty cool sight. things. They're look- okay, well, you're entitled to that opinion, uh, especially since your opinion was wrong going into this matchup. You were guaranteeing, Dave, you were tweeting about it, you're telling the world, oh, Ryback's going to beat Punk. Here's why, blah, 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 blah. And that didn't right. happen tonight. But I will, t- I will tell you, I will say this. Even with all that, there is no doubt that Ryback was presented as a bigger star than he ever was tonight because he dominated – at the end of the pay-per-view, and they went off the air with Ryback, and there's unfinished business going into the, what, Survivor Series, where we need some teams, because it's been already mentioned that Punk is going to be in a team at the Survivor Series. This, again, I think is more long-term than you might be giving it credit for being David Hero. They've got to get, they've got to bridge themselves from now to the Royal Rumble. And right, and, Survivor and, and Series, the DLC, 
listen, you need to elevate CM Punk to the Rock's level. He's not there yet. On paper, CM Punk cannot beat the great one. Right? I don't I don't I don't agree. You think the 218-pound WWE champion can defeat G.I. Joe? Listen to you. Jim Ross mentioned it tonight. Hot, you can't measure a star by mere size alone. You measure by ability and talent. Let's make that same argument for how, how much does Shawn Michaels weigh at his peak. He's one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Amigo, did Shawn Michaels beat Hulk Hogan? Did Shawn Michaels beat Andre the Giant? No. Did John Cena beat Rock, Andre, Did John Cena beat Andre the Giant? People weren't asking this no. question about Cena last year. No, The Rock has beaten Hulk Hogan. So okay. is Shawn Michaels. The Rock has beaten Stone Cold Steve Austin. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels has not beaten Stone Cold Steve Austin, and he has not beaten Hulk Hogan. Yes, he has. Shawn Michaels beat Hulk Hogan. Yes, it was, no, well, it was Mr. America, but yeah. At SummerSlam, Hulk Hogan defeated We're Shawn Michaels. Big, look, you got to start watching SmackDown, and you got to start watching Raw, and finding these matchups that happen. Look, that's immaterial to what you're trying to say. No, which it's is not. That, no, well, what I'm saying big, is, when you, when you have The Rock on the marquee against CM Punk, it has to look like an even playing field, and right now it doesn't. To you, it doesn't. <clears throat> Well, I would hope to most wrestling fans that have a brain out there that they would they would agree with me that right now it looks one sided. So was Hulk Hogan on Andre the Giant's level at WrestleMania three? Absolutely. No, he wasn't. Absolutely, he wasn't. He was the WWF World Champion and and had defeated every monster. Going, they were on equal footing. CM Punk is not on equal footing. Hulk Hogan was the biggest star in wrestling at WrestleMania three. Andre the Giant was number two. You've, you've evolved this into whether or not they're on equal footing. Your question was, is Punk a credible challenger for The Rock? And to that, I say yes. I'm not saying that they're on equal footing. I'm saying that he is a credible challenger for The Rock. You said a credible challenger to The Rock. The Rock isn't the champion. I'm not talking belts. I'm talking on a competitive basis, one-on-one -on -one matchup. I believe mm -hmm. a punk rock match. I'm okay. intrigued by a punk rock match. Not okay. intrigued by a Ryback rock match. That sounds funny, by the way, a punk rock match. <laughs> <laughs> well, CM Punk is still the WWE champion coming out of Hell in a Cell. Hey, and you know what? And I am fine with that. that that's fine with me. That's okay. I'm just saying I'm looking long-term, creating other stars, because look what happens. John Cena injured... He can't go in hell in a cell. They have to find somebody else. Imagine if Ryback didn't have that undefeated streak going. Who do they put in that match? They had nobody else that could be put in that spot. True. And and let's not lose sight of the fact that WWE was in a pretty tough pickle as it pertains to this, because going into this, it was going to be John Cena and CM Punk. I'm a little surprised we never saw Cena on the actual pay-per-view itself. Yeah, whatever happened with that whole thing with uh, AJ? Anything? I didn't now, we're going to find out tomorrow sure. night on Raw when apparently the evidence will be presented. Will be presented. Well, that never ends well. On Raw. <laughs> ask, ask, well, yeah, exactly. Um, anyways, that wasn't the only matchup on the card. There was a WWE World Heavyweight Championship matchup on the card as well. And uh, that ended with a brand new world heavyweight champion, and Sheamus got pinned by the Big Show. Big Show wins the world heavyweight championship after not one but two weapons of mass destruction. That but was a fantastic match. That match told fantastic. a hell of a story. It told a hell of a story. You're absolutely right, but it was not a hell of a matchup. That match dragged on because all it was was a Big Show beatdown of Sheamus until the end. Now, the end did justify the means when we had the false finishes, the near finishes, the, the pinfalls, and all that. It became much more interesting at that point. But to a point, it was like, man, when's Sheamus going to get some offense in this thing? And arguably, maybe he shouldn't have been getting some. But at the same time, I'm not sure he should have been picking up Big Show. And I'm not sure he should have been exercise, ex exercising the bro kick on Big Show as well because Big Show had been presented as so dominant. I, don't give you, I will give you the fact that it was a great finish. 
and a great last few minutes of that matchup where we saw, again, choke slams, brogue kicks, knockout punches by Big Show. But at the end of the day, the Big Show avoided the brogue kick and delivered a right hand to Sheamus. One, two, three, pin the World Heavyweight Championship around the waist of the Big Show. But the one thing that a lot of people were expecting to happen tonight, maybe because we have been guaranteed it by him, no cash in by the Money in the Bank briefcase holder, Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, and you know what? I, I think that was smart because you didn't want to have Dolphy Z go out there with a fresh Big Show that wasn't vulnerable. I mean, right now, Dolph might just sit and wait because I think Randy Orton is going to now jump to that number one spot, number one contender. He had a big win over ADR, and it was a solid win, and it was a it, it, it was a strong win. And right now, hey, Sheamus is better than Bruce. You know what? Let him sell those injuries for a while. Keep him off TV for a month. Give Randy Orton a shot right now. Well, Randy Orton also getting a win tonight over Alberto Del Rio. And, uh, well, maybe Orton is back into that picture because he is playing that role of face. And, obviously, uh, uh, Randy Orton playing that role of heel, even as reluctantly as he is doing so. A lot more happened on this pay-per-view tonight from WWE Hell in a Cell. We're going to talk about the results of the Divas Championship matchup, the United States and Intercontinental Championship matchups, and also the Tag Team Championship matchup. We're going to do that in just a moment when we come back here on the Pro Wrestling Report post-show for WWE Hell in a Cell. We're live on Blog Talk Radio. The conversation continues right here in the Blog Talk Radio chat room. We'll be back in just a moment. There's only one place to get the latest from pro wrestling, including the only place to get 100% verified wrestling news. Watch or listen to all of our latest TV and radio broadcasts on demand and get caught up on wrestling news between episodes. PWRshow.com is the cleanest, friendliest, and most fan-friendly source for wrestling news on the web. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the post show here on uh, Blog Talk Radio. This is Damian Nelson along with David Hero. We're live here on Sunday, October 28, 2012, talking about WWE Hell in a Cell, which just uh, went off the air on pay per view. A brand new world heavyweight champion in the big show. And CM Punk retains his WWE championship amongst a ton of shenanigans, including a referee who gave Ryback a low blow. CM Punk wins that, well, that matchup. Sounds funny. CM Punk wins that matchup. There were other matchups on the card. David Hero, we talked about Randy Orton defeating Alberto Del Rio. But it was another match for the Divas Championship as Eve retained against Caitlin and Layla in what was a decent Divas matchup. A little clumsy at times, but a good match overall. You know what? The girls were put in a bad spot. They had to follow Sheamus and Big Show. And let's face it, Usually those matches aren't very solid. It was passable. It was decent. wasn't great. But, uh, I mean, let's face it, that entire pay-per-view was built around one match. But, um, but like I said, Sheamus and Big Show, I think, stole the show. A couple of bonus matchups occurred tonight, one of them being a tag team matchup. Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara teaming up to take on the primetime players. Another good matchup, however, scary moment in the matchup as Sin Cara landed right on the top of his head, was actually knocked a little silly, and had to be checked on by the WWE medics. It did not stop him and Rey Mysterio from winning that matchup. And i got to say, again, the primetime players, extremely impressive in this match. You know, I was... Uh... From what I understand is when Sin Cara knocked on his head that when they asked him, you know, if he knew who he was, he couldn't speak any English. Will you stop? Another surprise matchup was for the United States Championship. Another solid matchup as well. Antonio Cesaro versus Justin Gabriel, as you recall. Justin Gabriel getting a win on Cesaro this past Monday night on Raw. Well, that would not be the case tonight as Antonio Cesaro defeats Justin Gabriel. But again, Gabriel showing a lot of offense and it seems like WWE might be behind Mr. Gabriel going forward, but tonight was not his night to win the United States Championship. Well, you know what? Uh, I, the problem was the fans weren't into the match. And, you know, when, you know, it, 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 as hard as JBL and Jim Ross and Michael Cole are trying to make the match sexy and entertaining and give you a backstory and whatnot, if the crowd's not into it, it's not going to come across that well on TV, and that's what happened. I mean, both guys... Tremendous talents, good athletes, but unfortunately, nobody cared. 
Yeah, but uh, there were a lot of matches they didn't seem to care about tonight, David Hero. And another one of those matchups was for the Intercontinental Championship, which featured The Miz going one on one with Kofi Kingston. Solid that's effort. Another the Miz is involved. Solid effort, another good story with the Miz working on Kofi's wheel, if you will, trying to keep him out of the sky, but that effort would not be successful. As Kofi Kingston retains the Intercontinental Champion with a post-match interview and all, again, focused definitely on Kofi Kingston. I think if given enough time, um, Miz and Kofi can put together a really, really nice program. I think those two complement each other well. They both need to get to that next level. I mean, Miz is trying to regain his top spot in the company, and Kofi's just trying to get there. And I think those two can put together a nice little program, almost like a uh, Tito Santana, Don Morocco type feud where they put value back into the IC title again. Oh, no, no, no. The last person to put value back in the IC championship was none other than the endorsed Cody Rhodes, who was also in a championship matchup tonight. That championship match was for the tag team titles, along with his partner, Damian Sandow. They, however, would come up short, too, tonight, David Hero. And would well, I wouldn't the say team. they came up short. You know, it was a DQ, is what it was. And, yeah. you know, if you, go, if you go back to be the booker, you saw how much trouble I had booking that match. Right. And you, and you can obviously tell that the WWE corporate offices had the same problem because they just went with the DQ finish right. where neither team gets hurt by that. And that and was probably the best finish for that match, you know, because now they can keep, you know, going forward with this program and, uh, and, and, and increase the stakes without teams getting hurt. Well, that was the pay-per-view. That was WWE Hell in a Cell. David Hero, i got to say, this was fairly lackluster in my opinion. And quite frankly, all of this could have happened on Raw tonight, or on, on any given Raw in the same time frame. And I would have saved $55. I, I, underwhelmed. And we talked about this on Be the Booker in primetime last night. This pay-per-view did, did not look very strong on paper. But the Ryback mm-hmm. Punk match definitely built a lot of intrigue. The Ziggler cash in built a lot of intrigue. I would venture to say maybe the tag team finals built some intrigue. But at the end of the day, aside from Big Show winning the championship, nothing happened. You're right. Nothing happened except for the nut shot seen around the world and the Big Show, your new world heavyweight champion. Was it worth $55 for you, David Hero? Absolutely not. The question, the question that need be asked, and we're asking you on Twitter, again, that's at PWR Show on Twitter. Many of you have done it already, but you still have a chance to do so as we have a few minutes. Retweet, pass or fail for WWE Hell in a Cell. If you watch the show legally, go ahead and send that retweet, pass or fail, WWE Hell in a Cell. But, uh, you know, 55 bucks. It was, you got to compare this thing to Bound for Glory. Not on an apples to apples comparison, but on a ratings comparison for October pay per views, and and I would say based on what we're seeing so far and what we've heard so far, not just from you and I, but from even uh in the chat room here and on our Facebook page, Facebook dot com slash PWR show, TNA Bound for Glory was the better pay per view this month. Oh, hands down, it was by far better. Matter of fact, you know what you know what it is. Like I said earlier, it's the stigma attached to a hell in a cell that people want to see destruction. They want to see blood. They want to see carnage. They want to see that big bump, that oh my God moment. And we didn't get that tonight. If we would have got that one oh my God moment, I think everything would be different right now. You're left with nothing after this pay-per-view. And as we talk about Bound for Glory, just for comparison's sake, before we give you the Twitter results from tonight, 85% of you said that Bound for Glory was a passing pay-per-view from TNA Wrestling back a couple of weeks ago. We are only three weeks away, David Hero, from the WWE Survivor Series, which means we're in the fast lane, the left lane, to set up the Survivor Series. Tomorrow night's Raw should be fairly active in that regard. They got a lot of work to do to get people invested and bought in, and they could do it. I mean, WWE has been known to turn everybody's bad opinion of one night around some 24 hours later. They need to do that again tomorrow night. Especially. Well, they need to have Ric Flair show up tomorrow to, to get the stench off of everyone's pay per view. Why are you beating this drum, Ric Flair? Why are you trying to spoil things for fans and, I'm and talk about it, rumors that I'm are not. out there? I'm just saying they, they need something special. What should I say? They need Brock Lesnar show up. Brock Lesnar's not going to change anything. 
They what? need to do something to take the fans' minds off of the debacle of that $55 night they just had. Let's not forget, WWE's got some challenges. I mean, this pay-per-view is like you go out on a hot date, you take the chick home, and all of a sudden you find out there's a tree trunk in your hand. You're very disappointed. Who grows trees inside their home? Just saying, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. WWE's got some challenges, though. As you know, Hurricane Sandy all up and down the East Coast. Atlanta, great crowd tonight. That's on the southern reaches of it, but they're they're, they're going north. They're going into Charlotte tomorrow night. We're going to have some issues over the course of the next few days. And, uh, of course, they will share all that information with you, as will we, uh, here at PWR and PWRshow.com. But, David, here are the results tonight of WWE Hell in a Cell from the fans' perspective, what they thought, whether or not it was a passing or failing grade. Well, this could be one of the lowest-rated pay-per-views in WWE history, at least since we've been tracking it this way, as only 38%, 38% of the audience out there said that it was a passing score. That is low. 62% thought it was a fail, David Hero. Does that say anything about Ryback and what they left us with tonight? Absolutely. The fans didn't want a screw job finish in a hell in a cell. That's they not, don't. That's not the question. The question is, does it say anything about Ryback? I, I don't, you're right about the screw job finish in a hell in a cell. But did they, does, is Ryback any part of that blame for this low rating on the pay-per-view? No, not at all, because the, the the fans knew going in how one-dimensional Ryback is. Fans didn't know going in how one-dimensional your draft roster was, because uh, ha-ha, you have lost your lead, pal, and the polls have been wrong for weeks. You just I, said it was tied no. up. I won Ohio tonight, David Hero. I took 180 points to your 125 making this draft a tie. 1,410 points each. Oh, well, that's good. Only up from here, going into Hell in a Cell, I'm going, sorry, going in. Did you get my Zack Ryder points on tonight? I mean, he did dress up in the witch costume. points for that. And you know what? I'm going to be at Turning Point from TNA Wrestling in just, uh, what is that? Is that next week? I should probably start planning. Um, I'm going to be at Turning Point down in the Impact Zone. So I'm going to I'm going to talk to a few people and make sure that uh, Jeff Hardy, Austin Aries, and uh, they get me points. And, uh, you know, Robbie E. owns me a favor, so... Uh, I want to make sure that uh, you know he takes a fall on on, on next Sunday at uh, April. All right, well, David, uh, a little surprising results tonight, but actually not very surprising because we didn't really think this pay per view was going to be very strong going into it, but it was going to be intriguing, and I'm not sure they even met that hype of the intrigue that was built. Let's go over the quick results again before we go off the air of tonight's WWE Hell in a Cell on pay per view. Alberto Del Rio loses to Randy Orton. Randy Orton wins that matchup in the opening contest. From there, the tag team championships were on the line. His team, hell no, Daniel Bryan and Kane lose to the Rhodes Scholars, but they do so via disqualification when Kane went a little crazy after some miscues and some miscommunication. It was a solid wrestling matchup. you got to imagine that's going to go on. Kofi Kingston retains the Intercontinental Championship over The Miz. Antonio Cesaro retains the United States Championship over Justin Gabriel. Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara defeat the primetime players in another solid matchup. Brand new world heavyweight champion in the big show who defeated Sheamus tonight. And Eve retains the Divas Championship. Eve retains the Divas Championship in a three-way matchup. And they're, uh, the winner, I guess, we'll say this because that's the way at least the ref counted, uh, in the WWE Championship Hell in a Cell matchup, surrounded by all kinds of shenanigans, was CM Punk. But leaving Atlanta at least on the broadcast version of the pay-per-view, standing tall, was Ryback on top of the Hell in a Cell. Tomorrow night's Raw should be interesting, and we'll be covering that as well with the post-show, or the meltdown, rather, right after WWE Raw tomorrow night. I want to thank you all for tuning in here to the post-show on Blog Talk Radio. We'll see you again for the meltdown right here on Blog Talk Radio again tomorrow night. So long, everyone. <laughs>